Welcome, friends, to This Is My Life. We have a different type of program for you today. I think it's going to be one that's going to bless you. We're going to talk about divine surprises. What in this world am I talking about? Well, Melinda's got a scripture that she wants to share with you that will explain a little bit of what divine surprises are. Amen. And I hope that you're going to be prepared to receive some divine surprises after this. Yes. Amen. Okay. Um, I want to share Psalm 5, 12, which says, For you, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround them as with a shield. And, you know, if you're a believer today, you have God's favor. You have favor with Him. And this means that God will set you up with the right circumstances and with the right people in your path that will appreciate you and that will celebrate you. Amen? Uh, doors will open that nobody else can open. Uh, yes. Blessings come that surprise you. And that's what we're going to be talking about some today. And even people that were against you will have a change of mind and all of a sudden might even become your friend. But I tell you one thing. God wants you to be where you're celebrated and not tolerated. Because where you're celebrated, that's where God's favor is. Amen? So anyway, we're going to share some of the stories. Yes. And I just happen to be the one that's going to lead this off. But everybody's <laughs> got stories of some divine surprises that they want to share. Oh, uh, just a minute. And by the way, we want to hear your divine surprises. It would bless us so much if you would email us or write us or something. And let them, Bobby, I had a divine surprise. Here's what it is and here's when it happened. Amen. <laughs> that would bless us because I Amen. know you've had them. You just might not recognize them. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. The first one that I want to share, it happened back in the 90s. And uh, I, my husband and I had gone to Houston uh, to a conference at John Osteen's church. And this is when uh, Joel Osteen's father was still alive. And anyway, we were in <coughs> these meetings and they were just fantastic. But, uh, you know, of course, when you go to these meetings, there's thousands of people. And so, you know, my husband made a comment. He just said, you know, let's just don't rush to try to hurry in there and get a good seat. Let's just get there and sit wherever, you know, we just find a place to sit. And I was all for that. I wasn't going to try to rush and get down as close to the front as possible, although that that's always nice. So anyway, we went and we sat down at some seats and it was a good, you know, I'd say about halfway back from the <laughs> front of uh, the church. And uh, our friends who had gone with Mike and Donna Floyd, they were there and they were sitting up in a certain section, which was much closer to the front. And so anyway, uh, we w were meeting some people. In fact, a pastor from Africa came. He sat down beside us and we sat, you know, mm -hmm. with him and began to talk with him and just share things. And anyway, the you know, the meeting was getting ready to start. And all of a sudden, a divine surprise happened. <laughs> An usher out of nowhere came up to all, you know, all just think about it, all these people. I mean, I'm talking thousands of people. This usher came up to me and my husband and he said, uh, are you ministers? And we said, well, yes. He says, come with me. And here's what I said. Well, can my friend go? And this was a godly man from Africa, a pastor. He goes, sure, bring him. You got to take those that you make friends yeah, with, right? right? So we get up. I didn't know what was going on, but we followed him. He took us down, not only to the front, but the front row, the very front wow. row. <laughs> we were sitting right down on the same row as Pastor John Osteen's family was sitting. You could oh, see them. My goodness. Wow. I was wow. blown away. And my husband leaned over and he said very quietly, he said, it's your faith that got us up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and, glad you recognize and that. And I didn't say anything, but I'm going to tell you, the Lord spoke to me and here's what he said. He said, I'm healing your soul. Oh. Because my husband and I had gone through some things where we were just kind of put down and, you know, kind of just forgotten about and put to the sidelines and you know it wasn't a pleasant time for us but God took us that day from the middle of the church with that divine surprise and took us to the front and we passed our pastors we passed Mike and Donna Floyd and, and Mike was going like this look, look 
there goes Melinda Ronnie. He was like, he was as shocked as we were. And so that was one. Of, that was one of the most awesome, divine surprises and favor of God that I can remember. That just I'll never forget it. So that's oh, one of mine. Yeah. So we'll beautiful. move along, and y'all can beautiful. share some too. But well, it was just beautiful. incredible. <laughs> yeah, we have beautiful. two that uh, have come to mind that we wanted to share with you. Um, which one you want to share first? Let's start talking about the ring. Okay. Yeah, let's go with the ring. Uh, well, I'll give a little background on that. Um, I love Bobby. Yes, yeah, she has favorites, and in this case, it's opals. Now, they're not terribly expensive stones, but they're very attractive, very pretty. Show it, show multiple, yeah, multicolored. Yeah, we'll try to get a, a close-up yeah, shot of that yeah. for you and splice it in so you can see what it looks like. But um, I had bought her the ring. This happened several years back. And uh, she'd been wearing it every day. And one day, suddenly, she looked down and the stone was gone. It was missing. One of the little fingers that holds the rock in there had snapped off and the, it was gone. We had no idea, no idea where it would have happened, where it might be. Could have been outside in the car, any place. And, and it was, and it was just, just heartbreaking for me because yeah, not only is the opal my favorite, but I had already told uh, Frank when I go to heaven now. I want this opal to be for my granddaughter, and I want that opal to be for my daughter. It was something I was planning on handing down to her. Mm -hmm. Not because it was that valuable, but it was valuable to me. All right, sentimental value there. So anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, we kind of prayed about it. It's, you know, Lord, <laughs> if you can do anything, it'd be nice for that stone to come back. And we just sort of left it at that. Well, fast forward a few days. Yeah, a few days later, uh, we were sitting at the couch together where we usually are in the mornings for breakfast. And I just happened to look down on the floor on the carpet between us. And here sits that little stone just staring up at me. <laughs> and not only that, just, but a light came, the... a sunshine came through the window, and it shined right down on the stone, just highlight. Now, I do vacuum my carpet, so <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say, it's, a, it's amazing. I mean, God had to put it there because we have vacuumed, we have... cleaned up. Picked it up and brought Not it Not as there. much as we should, but we, <laughs> we do clean up. And uh, it had to be God that did that. Yeah. That would, that made me feel so loved by so, God. Uh, now it's, it's been remounted in a, a bigger yeah. holding. And there's a, in fact, in this case, there's a little tiny diamond chip right next to it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So there you are. Um, we had one other uh, divine surprise concerning jewelry. We was at the beach one time. Oh, yeah. And when my parents were alive, they had a place down at the beach, and we were down there. And we'd, we'd been on the beach and in the sand, sitting in the chairs and watching everything, and we decided to come back. Well, when we come back, I, I realized that my watch was gone. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Faith just arose in Frank, and he said, I am not going to let the devil steal Amen. that right. watch. Amen. We're not going to lose that. So Amen. He said, I'm going down there, and I'm going to find that. <laughs> Amen. Said, Amen, Frank. You, my, faith <laughs> was, my faith was not up, because, <laughs> because there's a lot of white sand yeah, down yeah. there at the beach, and so we'd walk colored. up and down the beach, and there's no telling oh, where. Yeah, yeah. But he went but down as soon there. As I, he, yeah, as soon as I hit the beach. I just felt kind of led, and I just kept walking, and I walked straight right to it, stood right over it and picked it up. I didn't know anymore where, which way to go, but I just felt led. Amen. Go here in this direction, just keep walking, and there it was. Amen. Found that thing in the sand. Friends, let me tell Surprise. you. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise, exactly. God is no respecter of persons. He loves you just as much as He loves us, and He'll give you a divine surprise. Ask Him. If you don't think you've had a divine surprise, you probably, I'm sure you probably have. You, you may have had and just didn't realize that that's it. what was happening. But yeah. ask Him to send you one. 
where you can recognize it. Our other, we'll tell you in a minute, but let's go back and let Melinda okay. share one. Well, I kind of have a fun one. This one, um, uh, you know, the Lord knows us inside and out, and He knows what we like and what we don't like and what brings us great joy. And for me, getting a deal is just, I mean, I, I, don't, I rarely pay full <laughs> price for anything. I mean, I like deals, and God knows it. But anyway, so I had gone into a store here in Tallahassee, and um, I was always going over to where the shoes were because there's a certain shoe that I love, and it, they're, made, they're called Yellow Box. And they make sandals and different, mostly just sandals, but I love the Yellow Box brand of shoes. So I'm always over there looking. So this one day I was over there and they didn't have anything in my size, boo-hoo, mm. but they did have a snow one in a box that was size eight. And I thought, well, um, I think my granddaughter might be able to, you know, wear this. So anyway, I took it up to the front counter and, you know, to pay for it. So I went up there and I said, this says that it's on clearance, but, you know, I'm not sure about how much. So anyway, she took the box and she scanned it. And, uh, you know, I, remember, I, I noticed she was kind of looking, you know, looking kind of funny and uh, taking a little bit of time. She goes, ma'am, she said, um, this is saying that uh, these shoes are a dollar. <laughs> And I just looked at her, I said, a dollar? She said, well, that's what it says. I said, why, why would it only be a dollar? <laughs> and she said, well, they've been discontinued. And I said, oh, okay. So, I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm just zipping my mouth saying, don't act real excited. Don't, don't, you know, don't act too excited right here at the counter. So I unzip my purse and I get a dollar out. So I hand the woman the dollar. And so, uh, you know, she's trying to get the shoes and put them in a bag to give to me and everything. So she hands that to me. And then she gives me, she goes, well, here you go. Here's 99 cents. She gives me 99 cents and change from a dollar. So I say to her, I thought, she's made a mistake. So I said to her, ma'am, I said, uh, why did you give me 99 cents back? You told me this, these were only a dollar. She says, well, ma'am, when it was all said and done, they're only a penny. <laughs> Well, when she said that, I just said, I tell you, I said, I have never, <laughs> that's not what I said, I have never, ever gotten a deal like this in my life. A pair of yellow box shoes for a dollar, I mean, for a penny. I said, thank you so much. I was so excited. I was walking out that store saying, thank you, Jesus. And then I got out, so I said, Lord, I know you must be laughing. You must be laughing up there because you realize that I'm completely flipped out over this. So anyway, I saved the shoes and I gave them to my daughter, mm -hmm. I mean, my granddaughter for Christmas. So when she opens them, of course, she loves them and she's looking at them. So I said, now, wait a minute. I want to tell you the story behind these shoes. So when I shared it with my family and I tell her and her parents that I only paid a penny for these, they, <laughs> nobody could believe it. They just were laughing. And so to this day, my 11-year-old granddaughter, which she just wore them the other day, she said, well, I've got on my penny mm -hmm. uh, yellow box shoes. I said, you sure do, sweetie. It and, gives a whole new meaning to the term penny loafers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's just... I mean, that was a divine surprise. I mean, yeah. the, oh, just, I mean, it was just, it was sure. so exciting for me. <laughs> so, <Sure. laughs> I understand. God Amazing. can do all kinds of things. Oh, he sure yeah. can. Oh, he yeah. can. Wonderful. Uh, our next surprise we want to share with you has to do with the door key. We, uh, oh, yes. We yeah. had been, I think, but. here to the station recording and was going back home and, uh, my husband, bless his heart, just don't throw a key away. He's now, got keys. Right, there's a little background, yeah. We'd been here, but then we decided to go up to uh, Publix. We were going to get something in Publix. Yeah, that's And right. we were getting out of the car, and I had the keys in my hand. And I looked at it, and that's when I realized I did not have the house keys on the ring. <laughs> When something like that happens with me, it, it, it kind of takes my breath away and, and I, I sink and, and I, panic starts to set in because I'm thinking, oh, gee, what are we going to have to do to get in the house? Do I have to jimmy a door, break a window? Do I have to call a locksmith to come out and spend a lot of cash on something like this? And normally that would have been my reaction, but for some reason I did not panic that time. And I hope it's because <laughs> I've been walking more in the Lord <laughs> now. Amen, amen, exactly. You have, Frank, amen. So I, I just, I said, nope, all right, we'll just go on home, 
go back home and see what we can do about this. So we're driving back, I get in the driveway, and I do carry a, a, a group of keys on another ring that they're, they're for other pieces of things around the house, and we have some rental property, I have keys for that, but I do not keep house key, my house keys on that ring. So I said, well, let me, I'll just try this. <laughs> what have I got to lose? Exactly. I'll just try this. <laughs> So I grab this lot of keys and I walk up and I take the first key that looks like it might fit and I stick it in there and no, it's not working. I grab this second key and I know it's not the house key. I run it in, I turn it and it unlocks. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, what's going on here? So we go inside, I get the house keys. So when I get in there, I said, I've got to check this out. Maybe it's a, you know, a duplicate key and it just happened. Because there's only a certain number of combinations you can make on those keys, you know. Yeah. Maybe it just happened to land that way or when they made it. So I, I, st I stick the key back in there and it will not turn the lock. It opened one time. One time. time. Well, wow. that's, that's all I needed. That's all you needed. <laughs> that's all you needed surprise. to get in. Amen. Surprise. And, surprise. Glory to God. And, you know, the Holy Spirit is so good. Rod, you've been telling me for several days, days up to that, that, that we yeah. need to get a key made Another to set the of door keys and, and give it to my neighbor. Yeah. And, uh, in case it was needed. <laughs> and it was on my back burner. I told Frank it was on the back burner to do it someday. You know, do this. what those some days are. You, know, you don't get around to it, you know. And, uh, so as soon as this happened, Frank said, All right. We're, We're going, going to get, get that. He <laughs> made a given to Gwen soon. Yeah, we got it. So, <laughs> so happy to report that they have been made. Yes. The second yes. set has been made. Yes. <laughs> We're going to and, but you know, we took it. the door key and put it with this other key. And you know, on no. the side where they cut the little grooves, you know, to open it up. It was nothing. No like match. It, no, no match no at all. No match at all. Just totally two different but keys. But God. But that but one God. time. Surprise. Divine right? surprise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise God. Well, you know, when we were leading up to this, um, there was one more I thought of in our case uh, for us, and it was actually on our honeymoon. There were so many, it was a week long, and it was the next day it was a surprise, the next day was a surprise, the next day after that another surprise. The whole thing, the whole week, it was was planned out by God, and we had no idea in fact, we didn't even know what was going to happen when we started out on the honeymoon. It, we, uh, when we were talking about it um, to, to decide where to go, we, we both enjoy the mountains, going up in the mountains. And so we pulled out the map, and we're just looking around. And up on the top edge of Georgia, just over the line, is a little town, a couple of little towns. One of them's Hawassi up in that area there. And uh, we said, well, let's go there. You know, it looks nice. But let's go there. What was the surprise? Tell them what the surprise was. Well, the first part of the surprise was after we got there, uh, the, the next day we, we thought we'd look around and we found this place down the road and up the side of a hill called Field of the Woods. And it's a, a church camp uh, by the uh, Church of God out of Cleveland, Tennessee. So we, we drove over there, and now this was in uh, oh, yeah. March. Yeah. So F Florida had already kind of come out of winter, but up there it was still a little the low, kind of the last edges of winter and uh, the slight beginning of spring <laughs> was going on. But when we got up in there, it was kind of a dreary, cloudy day. It was mist and rain. A little misty rain, kind of a, a cool. cool breeze was blowing. And so we walked around, uh, looked around at things in there. It's, it's in a little valley between two little small mountains. On one side over here are the Ten Commandments on a big, huge uh, concrete slabs. Big thing. You can see it from the air. It's so right. big. And then on the other side, there's a few other things. and then. There's a, a set of steps that go up the side up to a, a kind of a, a landing. They call it the altar area. And a, 
the history of it is that there's a fellow named Johnston that back in the 20s and 30s was happened to go up there to pray before God and he was uh, in distress about the condition of the body of Christ in the church at that time. So he prayed and prevailed there. But they, like I said, they developed the area and there's a little concrete slab up there with an altar area. So we walked up the steps and we got up to the top of the altar area there. We were just walking around and suddenly, <laughs> here we go. It was like God flipped a switch up in heaven there and the clouds this is like a scene from a movie I mean it sounds hokey but this is the way it happened the clouds parted <laughs> above us the sun shone down on us but the I, wind stopped blowing I heard a bird start chirping mm -hmm. <laughs> and when the light shined down on us I could look I looked I could look outside the light the light was not shining, except it was just a little... Just sun. that area where just we the were. area that In we that were area on. where we were. Yeah. That and was the, a big surprise. The Spirit of God just fell on us there. It was so sweet and just remained for a few moments. And then just as suddenly as it came, it shut off and the clouds went back and the weather returned to what it was. Praise God. And so we had this little divine moment, this little divine surprise yeah. moment. But that was just the beginning of it because we'd spent a week up there we uh, stayed over that night. The next morning we got up and it, it, was, it had snowed a little bit. So eventually we worked our way over to an area called Brasstown Bald and it's supposed to be a, the highest mountain peak in Georgia and there's a, a weather station up on top of there. And we got there and they had a lot of cedar trees in that area. And the snow was pristine. It, it, it just lightly dusted all of the tree branches and a, a light coating on the ground and the, the weather was bright and clear and the air was clean. It was just a beautiful scene, a beautiful moment up there. And then we spent some time there. Again, to me, that was another little divine surprise from the Lord to, to bless us. Yeah, and is. the rest of the week went all the way through like that. Melinda, well, tell us another one of yours. Well, uh, another one that uh, I, I can share about is um, I was uh, at one point in my Christian walk, you know, I became a little bit discouraged. I, I don't remember what trial it was. You know, many are the <laughs> afflictions of the righteous, but yet God delivers us out of them all. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, uh, I didn't doubt God was with me. But there's just times in your life when you go through certain things that you just want God to confirm that he's there. You know it in your heart that he's there, but just show me, show me somehow. Mm -hmm. And so basically, I, that's what I did. I just said, Lord, you know, I know you're with me. I know you're not going to leave me or forsake me. I know all that, but I just want to sense you. I want to sense your presence, and I just want you to do something to uh, just let me know that you're there. Kind of a little reassurance. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, I didn't ask for anything specific. I just I just wanted him to do something, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I prayed that. And uh, so <clears throat> later in the day, we had these French doors at our back door, and I was actually there. And that's where I was kind of talking to the Lord, you know, and uh, about all this. But uh, all of a sudden, you know, later on, uh, the doorbell rang and we lived in a log house and we lived about five miles out from Capitol Circle so we didn't get a lot of visitors and if we did get some you knew they were coming but uh, so but you know people just didn't drive up unexpectedly to see mm -hmm. us so but anyway the doorbell rang and I thought who in the world could that be <laughs> so you know I go to the door but I kind of look out the window and I could see that uh, the, the van was uh, a florist because it, it had the sign on there it was a florist so I thought oh somebody He's lost because we did have some of that that would happen. So I opened up the door and he said, hello, uh, I'm blah, blah, blah. And um, I'm looking for Melinda Carroll. Is that you? And I said, yeah. He says, well, this I have a delivery here for you. And it was a beautiful basket and it had like a lot of some greenery in it, but some beautiful flowers. And I thought, I said, are you sure that's got my name on it? I, mean, I just <laughs> could not believe it. I thought, who would be sending me this, you know? And he looked again. He said, yes, ma'am, Melinda Carroll, if that's you. This is yours. I said, okay, well, thank you so much. Well, I couldn't wait to for you know to shut the door and get somewhere where I could put it down because I just I just couldn't imagine who it came from or why or, or what so I sat it down 
you know, and of course I opened up the little card and it was from this couple that I attended church with. And uh, so I opened it up and this is what it said. It says, uh, Melinda, you have been on our heart now for several days. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going on in your life right now, but the Lord wanted to let you know that oh. He is with you and He's not forsaken you and He's, <laughs> whatever it is, He's going to work it out, but He is with you. And I mean, wow. whatever she said, it just was everything that I had asked God to do for me. And I mean, you talk about a divine surprise. I was definitely, that was a divine surprise from God because it, it was something, you know, like most of us, we're totally not expecting sometimes mm -hmm. these things. And, oh, yeah. and it just blessed me and it encouraged my faith and it strengthened me. You know, those type of things, they strengthen us. They let, it, yeah. they let us know yeah. He's, hey, I'm here. I'm here. I think I think the Lord gets yeah. a charge out of doing these things. For, I really do. We're his, don't you get we're a charge? Children, you know, right? when you're especially when your children are younger. Even now, I like to surprise my kids. Yeah, I like yeah. to do nice things for them. Well, it's the same way with our heavenly Father. He likes to do nice things yeah. for us mm -hmm. and surprise us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's exciting yeah. serving God. I, you know, God's got a sense of humor. He has to have a sense of humor to put up with us. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, I, I can just see God laughing with joy over the surprises, the divine surprises that he sends us. Oh, and yeah. we get so excited about something oh, yeah. that is such a little bitty thing. And I can just see the Father rejoicing with laughter. Well, let me just say one more thing that's really short. And it's kind of really wild, but the divine surprise for me is when I see something on the floor and I wipe it up, you know, with a cloth real quick, and then I forget about it and I come back through barefoot and the next thing you know, I'm gliding like I'm on a surfboard going through the kitchen. And it was like, oh, you know, like I'm, you know, and I'm gliding, like, you know what I mean? Like just gliding. And then I, I come through it and I say, oh, Jesus, thank you for keeping me from busting my, you know what, <laughs> on this floor. But it's a divine surprise when you do things like that yeah. and the next thing you know you're sliding and going but yeah. God's there to protect us amen he sure keeps is. us from falling and hurting ourselves so I thank God for his mercy and grace and divine intervention mm -hmm. well you know this this program is a divine surprise to us each week I don't know exactly from one week to the next who we're going to have <laughs> or really just how we're going to pay for it either but God comes through because it's His program and we're yielded to Him. There's all kind of surprises that God will bring Amen. into your life too. Just ask Him to help you to recognize them. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got anything else to add, Frank? No, no. I think it's about time we can About wrap time it up. for us to yeah, sign off. To... Now, don't disappoint me. You send us an email on some divine surprises, okay? <laughs> This is Bobby and Frank and Melinda saying God loves you. Yes, we're talking to you and so do we. Mm -hmm.